And so, it begins. Dark were the skies and chill was the wind as the land was covered in a veil of malice. Across the hill did ride the dread army of the night. Cloaked in mist and fog, prepared to rain down death and destruction upon the land. And the people did crowd for a savior, a noble soul to save them from their impending revenge. Thank you for listening to the Blue Please intro. We are happy to inform you that you will be able to hear the rest for a low price of $10. 50% of this payment will go to Total Biscuit's personal Make-A-Wish Foundation, where he is raising money to drop a 10-ton sack of sand on Bobby Kotick's head. We hope you have enjoyed your partial intro and hope to see you again soon. Engaging the show in 3, 2, 1. Yes, indeed, folks. You are listening to the Blue Please Monday Massacre here on WOW Radio with myself, Total Biscuit. The date today is the 9th of November, 2009. It is 8 p.m. British Standard Time. It is 3 p.m. Eastern. In other countries, the time is different. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a socialist plot to confuse us all! What have I got coming up for you in the show today? Uh, many things, many things. I've heard that Blizzard have introduced an extremely popular new service, and I'd like to talk about it. But that's going to have to wait till a little bit later on in the show. Indeed. Also, a good change. And an idea. It's about BOA items. Apparently, BOA items are going to become cross-faction poster bubble. Yes. Heirlooms. We'll be talking about that a little bit later on in the show. And how I have an idea to save the world. Of Warcraft. Oh yes, you'll have to wait for that one. <sighs> it's been a stressful weekend, folks. I'm not going to talk about it, because I've said this in my podcast 101. Nobody cares about your week. And anyone that spends 15 minutes to half an hour or whatever talking about their week at the start of a podcast about something specific, unless, for instance, the podcast is a specifically a podcast about your week... It's going to bore the hell out of every new listener ever. Therefore, I'm not going to talk about it yet. I may mention it a little bit later on. Those of you who follow my Twitter will be aware of what's been going on. If not, I'm sure you can ask in the IRC. And if you're not there, well, what an error you have made. A mistake. Time to rectify it. IRC.MMOIRC.com, hash or pound, wow, radio. That is the place you need to be, folks. Oh, yeah. Alternatively, if you don't have an IRC client or you're too lazy to get one, chat button at the top of the screen on wcradio.com yes indeed now one thing we're trying to get this resolved I've heard the iTunes feeds have been broken for a little while iTunes is terrible and causes all manner of stupid things to happen we're trying to resolve it if you want to be subscribed in iTunes which is probably a lot of you then I would suggest that you use the RSS feeds that are on our website and simply add the RSS feeds to iTunes not too difficult at all. There is, in fact, if I remember correctly, I put I think I put together an instruction manual. Yes, yes I did. How to add shows to iTunes manually. It is on the forums, but I should give you a tiny Earl because I'm kind like that. I should give it a custom Earl. Aha. Yes indeed. Make create There we go. TinyEarl.com slash iTunes manual. That's TinyEarl.com slash iTunes manual. That gives you a full instruction as to how to add the podcast feeds manually to iTunes so they will update correctly until we get our issues with iTunes resolved. It's it's weird. I don't pretend to fully understand it, but we are working on it, folks. Yes, we are working on it. It will get dealt with. What else have we got coming up for you in the show? Do I have an update news? Why, yes. It's very special this week. Very special. You'll have to wait, though. And your chance to contribute to the show by emailing the at gmail.com. It's the illusion of choice. Shattering your illusions of choice only here on Blue Please on WCRadio.com. Email in a choice, a topic. I may choose it, I may not. It is a mystery. 
something you'll have to wait for. If it's good, that will be the topic for the last 15 minutes of the show. It's as simple as that. And unfortunately, we were not able to stop the Murloc from escaping his prison this week. We crafted the prison out of a rare form of adamantium, which we thought would be indestructible. It's also laced with kryptonite, because we thought since the Murloc is some kind of anti-superhero with powers of speech and influence and stock market trading, that kryptonite would affect him. And just to make sure, we covered it in a force field. It didn't work, unfortunately. He scared the servant boy into deactivating the force field, removing the kryptonite from the prison using some kind of suction device, and then simply opening the adamantium door. Now, this was a problem. This is something that we had not anticipated. This is something that we could have probably foreseen and perhaps preempted had we not simply put the work experience guy on designing the extremely expensive capture device. Sadly, we did so because the rest of the team was too busy making $10 pets. This is what happens, folks, when you have to restructure. Anyway. Okay, I may have blabbered enough for the time being. I have a different form of blabber. And it comes in the form of this. Uh, That sounds like it's mail time. Here's the mail. It never fails. It makes me want to wag my tail. When it comes, I want to wail. Indeed, folks, it is mail time. Guess what that means? I can't imagine. Right, here's one. This interests me. It intrigues me. It's from Brotz. 80 Frost Mage is a core raider of impact on Burning Legion US. And he has this to say to me. TB! Fantastic hearing your soothing voice working on a Monday. And have it come through the tubes live. There's nothing soothing about my voice, sir. I'll have you know. My topic today is concerning the current MLG. Where there were three teams that seem to be competitive. Rogue Mage Priest... Shaman, Death Knight, Warlock, and Shaman, Death Knight, Hunter. In my opinion, I don't feel that the MLG truly gives a good representation of how the real world plays the arenas. Many of the games that are played in real life, WoW, seem to come down to gear until you are hitting 1-800+, plus, where the skill starts to kick in more and more. For example, my three teams on live rounds is Maze, Sham, Lock. We are a triple DPS team and pretty much went from 1 to 1,200 without any issue. The next 200 points, however, were pretty much hell as we were getting paired many times in the uh, 1, 500 to 1, 700 bracket with teams who had 850 plus resilience. We hit the brick wall, took a week off, got our resilience to 800 minimum and are now cruising up the ladder again without any issue. For something as specific as arenas in World of Warcraft, should there be a regulator put in place where upon entering the arena you are set to a specific baseline so the games are decided more by skill than by gear and resilience. Personally, the most fun I've had in a long time for PvP was the dedicated arena realm because everyone was on a very even play field. On that realm we got what, nearly 1,900 before the prelims ended and we were very happy with our finish. How do you feel about this? The TLDR version is, arenas are based too heavily on gear scores, possibly implement baseline auto gear for arena participants, shift focus on skill instead of gear, Awards based on finish and some form of other compensation, and I would like to eat some delicious chicken tonight. Right. Funnily enough, a while ago, I actually had a solution to all of this, which was, of course, ignored because it was good. The problem with World of Warcraft, and indeed any RPGs, is when you introduce the PvP element, there is naturally going to be stats involved, and of course, how are stats given to you as the player? They are given via gear. That is to be expected. For instance, I am currently playing an outstanding RPG by Bioware by the name of Dragon Age Origins and have been doing solidly since Tuesday. And that game has a lot about gear as well in it. And I've just got to accept that because it's a role-playing game, it's an RPG, they're stat-based. It's not really so much skill. Now, I'm sure a lot of people would be very interested in seeing the arenas become a pure skill contest. Indeed, I would like to see them become a more skillful contest. Indeed, MLG, to me, is what arenas should be. You say that it's not a good representation of how the real world plays. Well, I would agree with that. 
However, one could also argue that the World Cup is not a real representation of how the real world plays football. Now, they play at such a higher level. Now, I've never really agreed with arenas being stat-based, but I can also understand where they come from. Again, RPG, got stats in it. My solution, of course, was to create various divisions, which would be granted gear at the end of every season, shorten the seasons, give it to everybody, make it very specific to arenas, and then have them fight based on skill, but Blizzard apparently doesn't want that. As to why, I really can't figure that out, because, hey, I thought Blizzard were trying to make this into an eSport. You can't really have an eSport unless you have an even field where skill is the determining factor. Now, of course, you will never have everything become skill, because beyond stats, you also have class balance. Class balance will, of course, never be perfect. There will be certain combinations that work better than others. The only way to perfectly balance a game is to make everything exactly the same. And you don't want that. Certainly not in a class-based RPG, that would be ridiculous. Who would support that? Hopefully nobody, if they've got any sense. So I can understand where you're coming from, and as much as I would love for that to happen, it unfortunately isn't going to, at least not at this part in time. Now, having done arena commentary on teams which were almost identical, and were wearing identical level gear, I would say that it was pretty exciting to commentate over, and hopefully the guys who watched the video which is on my YouTube channel, by the way, youtube.com slash totalhalibut. Go and have a look at that. You will see it there. That was pretty exciting. That was pretty cool to watch. But normal arena isn't. It's like watching a kick around at a local town field between two groups of random ragtag people. It's not all that interesting to watch in comparison to, say, the World Cup, which is why most people watch the World Cup and not the local kick around. So, yeah, I understand that. To be honest, one might think that you'd want two, perhaps two tiers. You could have a group of people in the pro league who were based around an equal footing of gear, and then you could have people in the amateur league who would earn gear the old-fashioned way, and you'd have to qualify for the pro league by being, well, good. That would be nice, wouldn't it? But at the moment, that is merely a pipe dream. We shall see. Right, got another email here. It's from Valerium. I had a spat at uh, over email, but all, all is well. He says this. Greetings to me. I am not quite sure if this phenomenon is going on on your server, or on any other server for that matter, but for the last six months now, every single day when you go to the bank outside Ogrimmar on my server, you'll see a website Earl in the form of Orc or Tauren Corpses that is, of course, a gold buying site. The Earl of which I will obviously not mention, since that would just give them publicity. Well, so I was mentioning it, but whatever. That's... This has really started to annoy the hell out of me, not only because it's just annoying, but because Blizzard has still not done anything about it. How hard can it be to fix? All they would have to do is make it so that you, if you log out or delete the character, the corpse respawns. There, problem solved. D despawns even, not respawns. Yeah, that would be a great solution. Yeah, the corpse will respawn if the character logs off. Infinitely multiplying, you'd eventually be completely covered in known corpses. Smelly things. What are your thoughts on this? Well, there is really no excuse, let's be honest. I can't imagine. It's a perfectly good solution. Have things despawn when you log off. I understand the whole, oh, my immersions thing. Whereas if someone dies, they sort of stick around when they log off and then they log back in and the corpse is still there. I understand. Yes. But I don't think it's a very good idea. Because it really serves no practical purpose in comparison to getting rid of this nonsense. Now, I don't believe that this method of advertising is all that effective. How many people seriously read those things? And more to the point, how many people are stupid enough to trust a website whose advertisers have just blatantly showing themselves exploiting and hacking the game? And yes, that's what it is. They cause corpses to fall from the sky. It's a hack. It's as simple as that. It's an exploit along the lines of the whole mining under the ground thing. They don't simply run into Ogrimmar. Do you think? Do you think they could do that? Do you think you could get 40 or 50 gnomes run into Ogrimmar, spell that out without dying? Not a chance. Literally, these things fall from the sky. It's a hack. Simple as that. Now, I would not trust my money in the hands of such people, would you? If you do, then you're really dumb and you deserve everything you get. But it's unfortunate that you did it anyway because you're giving money to these idiots. We're just perpetuating the cycle of failure that is known as gold buying, gold selling, and RMT. 
Should Blizzard do something about it? Absolutely. Do I think it's a very effective marketing strategy? No. Really? Why does that make a difference? I mean, the funny thing is that if you didn't know about gold selling and you looked at that URL, the URLs generally don't tell you all that much about it. It's easier just to Google. I don't know what exactly they're trying to accomplish, but to me this is a smell of desperation. It makes me wonder if Blizzard are deliberately not doing anything, because if they do, then they'll resort to something more drastic, which might actually be a more effective marketing strategy. There's a possibility for you. It's the lesser of several evils. We know that gold farming at least in terms of what it was like back in early TBC and all the way through vanilla, is dead. It's mostly about hacking people's accounts now. So, we'll see whether or not that actually develops into anything. Maybe they're just being passive on it for a purpose. Who knows? My name is Tall Biscuit. You're listening to Blue Please here on uh, WOW Radio. It's a cash-themed show today, folks. Seriously. So I'm going to play some Dire Straits. It's called Money for Nothing. Can't imagine why I play something like that. Enjoy.